I've been trying to alternate between the strategies we've been using for these so we master all of them. So I think today we're up to um, a quadrant method because I think the previous time we did it, we did graphs, right? So before we jump into the quadrants, the first thing I need is to get like a base angle, an acute angle that goes with this equation. How do I get that? Between 0 and 90, I'm going to get an answer. How do I, how do I find it? In the middle. We do th something with this sine first. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. I just think of sine x equals root 3 on 2. That's an exact value. In fact, these are all exact values. What's the angle between 0 and 90 that'll give me sine of that angle is root 3 on 2? Anyone remember? 60 degrees. Very good. So, 60 degrees is the angle I'm going to be playing with. Then I say sine is negative. So, which quadrants am I interested in? Three, four. 1, 2, 3, 4. I want 3, 4. Don't I? <coughs> 3, 4. Four. You can see there where sine is negative. So I think, what does 60 degrees look like in each of these quadrants, right? So I'm going to say, in the third quadrant, in the third quadrant, what do I do with the base angle? It's 180, oh, very close. It's 180 because I've got to go 180 degrees and go a little further to get into the third quadrant. It's going to be 180 plus, yeah? So 180 plus 60. And then in the fourth quadrant, I come all the way around, 360 is where I end, and then I come backwards, right? 360, <coughs> take away 60, okay? You can verify that on the graph as well. So my two answers are going to be, good morning, 240 or 300. Bam, and you can check it out. You get your negative answer, you can square it, you get three quarters, so it's through 302. All right, uh, again, quickly, cos x equals one on root two. So this is kind of handy, because when I look back at my quadrants, which quadrants am I after for this one? First, it's positive, right? First and fourth? First and fourth, okay. What's the base angle that goes with this guy? It's going to be 45 degrees. So what does that look like in the first and fourth quadrants? The first quadrant's easy, it's just 45, okay? We just did a fourth quadrant angle, right? What do I do with the fourth quadrant? 360, 360 take away, right? Okay, so again, there's my two solutions. 45 or 315. Okay, now, last one, I, I pointed out to you, I put this in red because it's a little bit sneaky. Um, you're probably not going to meet many questions like this, you know, recently, but number one, you will meet them eventually, if you go for two years, and number two, you totally know enough to solve the question, okay? Let's just start the way we did before. We say 10x equals this guy, right? We'll start by finding our base angle. Base angle. I ignore the sign to find the base angle, right? So if I do, you get a calculator, 10 inverse of 1 over root 3, or if you remember the exact value, what do you get out of that? 30 degrees, 30 degrees is my base angle, okay? Now, here's a point where the quadrants are going to start to let you down. You can still solve this by quadrants, but it starts to get confusing. I'm going to draw myself a really quick graph. Good morning. Okay, now I'm used to drawing my sine and cos and tan graphs and going naught to 360. You can see I've drawn the negative part over here because I don't want to go naught to 360. I want to go minus 180 to 180. So I'm going in both directions, negative and positive. Okay, so there's negative, there's positive. I know what the positive side looks like. It's going to look like that. Okay, so when I say, ooh, 30 degrees, where, where does this fit? It's going to be 180 minus 30 degrees. Okay, so there will be my first solution. But I would normally say, ooh, one, two, three, four quadrants. Which quadrants am I after? I want 10 to be negative, right? It's going to be second and fourth. Second and fourth. Which angle have I already found? Which solution? I found the second quadrant solution, right? There's one quadrant. There's the next one. 0 to 90, 90 to 180. So I have my second quadrant angle. But I don't have a fourth quadrant that goes this way, okay? In fact, my line, my graph should be going that way. I'll do it in another color so you can indicate. This is the negative side, right? So a graph here is far more powerful because I can literally put on, there's minus 180 and there's 180. Okay. So if I'm expecting, one of my solutions should be over here 
that's 150 degrees, okay, because it's 180, take away 30. 150 degrees. Where will the other solution be? Hmm. There's one of them. The previous one's going to be that way, <coughs> 180 degrees, right? Why is it 180? Do you remember why it's 180 with 10? Yeah. Fantastic. 10, in fact, all these graphs, they repeat every so many degrees. For these guys, it's 360. For 10, it's 180. And we labored that point when I graphed it with you on the screen, right? So it's going to be periodic. So I can go back 180 degrees from here. What's 150? Take away 180. It's going to be negative, right? Negative it's going be negative 30, yeah? Negative 30. Okay. So there's my two solutions. Um, the graphical solution does give it to you a little more cleanly and clearly as well. I think you can see why when you put that line across, minus 1 over 3, you'll get the two solutions. Alright, let's finish with uh, some more recent skills here. Um, wow, I'm running out of space. Let's try this. Find x. So, you have a look at this guy, and you've got two situations here. We know two rules for finding unknown sides in triangles like these. We've got the sine rule, we've got the cosine rule. Which one is which? For this first one. Okay, this first one is the cosine rule. And if you weren't sure how to identify that, right, you look at the information that you've got. The cosine rule, it needs two sides and an included angle. Included as if it's between the two sides that you've been given. So that's why I can use the cosine rule. We'll get to the sine rule for the last question in a second. So therefore, I'm just going to quote the cosine rule. C squared equals, I start like this because it reminds me of, which other rule that we know? Pythagoras. Pythagoras, very good. And then I adjust. This adjustment is what makes the cosine rule the cosine rule. And it works in non-right angle triangles, which is awesome. Okay. So therefore, now that I've got this, I'm just going to punch in. Right? So x is what I want to find. So that's why it goes over there on the left. And then I fit in my other two sides and the included angle. So I've got 14 squared, 17 squared, 14 by 17, cos 112. Are you happy with that? There's some calculator work you're going to have to do in there. You're going to evaluate it. You're going to take the square root. Has someone got the answer to one decimal place already? 25.8. 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. 25. 25.8? Yeah. yeah. Double check. Double. One in check. No. Um, see if you can work out. Let's just check. Does that make sense? Actually, it's just 25.8. Does that seem like a reasonable answer? Like, you have a look at the original diagram. Is that about what you'd expect? I, I think so. It's in the right ballpark for starters. It's not like 100 or 1,000 or something like that. And see how these sides, they're going to be shorter than this one because you've got a big angle over here that widens out the triangle. So you're going to expect that that's long. Okay? Uh, I think that sounds good. Right? Uh, just lastly, I'll squeeze it in under here. Uh, for question five, which rule are we going to use? It's the sine rule, and how do we know it's the sine rule? Excuse me, sir. So yes, Aaron. I, I got 23.2. Is it wrong? 23.2. Hmm. Is your calculator in the right mode? <laughs> we checked that before. Is that the answer you got as well? I got 17.5. 17.5. Okay. I'm pretty sure it won't be 17.5 because it, that doesn't look right. 23.2 does look in the right ballpark. So, being that we've got a couple of people who have this, maybe just check your numbers here, make sure your brackets aren't funny and that your calculator hasn't done something unusual in there, and then take the square root. Okay, and we'll check it a bit later. Alright, it's a sign rule. Why is it the sign rule? Have a look at the information you've got. Another colour. Yeah, two angles and um, one side and the other one that's unknown, right? Another way you can see it is you pair up a side with an angle, and then you pair up the other side with an angle. And that cross pattern is what gives you the sign rule. Okay? So therefore, we have used the sign rule a little bit. I'm going to jump straight in. I'm going to skip the formula. What am I going to write in the top left on this x. fraction? Yep, x, because I want to find x, right? If I can use the right color. x, and I match it up with? Sine Sine the opposite angle, right? Fantastic. Sine 53. And then I'm going to do the other. OK? Like I said, it's a really important line there. This is the demonstration for us as teachers and markers. The student not only knows the sign rule, but they know how to use it in this particular situation. Okay? That's why writing down a rule doesn't get you anything, but writing down the rule with the right pieces in it shows you know how to interpret the diagram. Okay? 
So you're going to bring that sine 53 over. Again, a bit of calculator work. Someone got it to one decimal place? 10.6. Does it sound right? Does it look about right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it matches up. Okay. Do I need to worry about the ambiguous case for sine? Because it's got that ambiguous case rule. Do I need to worry about it? No. I don't. I don't. Why don't I need to worry about it? It's because I'm... Um, Two things. Number one, it's because of what I'm finding, right? I'm finding a length, not an angle, okay? So being that I'm finding a length, you don't get this ambiguity because you're not doing sine inverse at any point, right? You're not trying to solve one of these equations, okay? So there's the first reason. And secondly, it matches up with your diagram, right? You're like, yeah, that's exactly what I would expect for that kind of sign. It's opposite a bigger angle, it's going to get a bigger length, okay? 